Hi, everybody. Um, I've let these dry, and I've gotten some paint. I let them dry overnight. And I'm going to quickly paint these up in a solid color. So, and then we're going to glaze them, and then you'll get to see what the texture does. So, one of them I'm going to paint black. And that'll be this texture one here. <laughs> Has a funny sound. Maybe it's my brush. Anyways, I'm going to really grind that in. I'm not being fancy with any kind of strokes right now. I just want to get it down fast. I do try to cover all the white dots, but if one happens to pop up later, we'll just cover it up with something else. All right, so this one I'm going to put down to dry. Okay, new brushes, new water. So now, uh, now I'm going to do this one in a, a nice, like, uh, whimsical type pattern. So this one, I'm going to paint blue for now. And I like the color. Sometimes you just add water and you can get different shades. And this is just acrylic. You can use any kind of acrylic. And this color is, um, I think it's ultramarine. And, and this is a great thing you can do with uh, canvases that have been mis messed up a little bit because it hides it so good. If you're going to redo things. Or reuse an already painted on canvas that you didn't like. All right, so now this one. I can also paint a couple different colors. So I think I'll start with a little green. <clears throat> and this one, I think I'll put more than one color. But I'm going to keep the colors dark again. On most all of these, I'm keeping the color dark because I want to come and put light highlights on it. But uh, I'm sure I could just go in reverse. And to prove that, what I'll do is I'll keep that part light. And we can do that, see how it looks. So let's see, maybe, maybe a little yellow in there just to see what it would be like. And I can really let this thin down with water because I don't want it, you know, really, really bright. And it goes well with my dark green pot. They mix nice. I 
don't want it to mix too much with the green because then I just lose the light part that I'm looking for. And so I'll call that done. And I will put that down to dry. I'm going to get some of the excess. Yeah, that'll spread out and keep it from dripping all over. So down that one goes to dry. And now I've got all three of them done. I'm going to let them all dry. We're going to come back and put some different color in there on my texture. Okay? See you soon. All right. They're all dry now. I used a hair drying on them. And what I'm going to do is put some lighter color on. So let's get some more yellow out. What I was thinking when I even put this down was that I'd do a uh, forest scene, perhaps. Uh, maybe a close-up with grass and rocks. So I'm going to start putting some earth things in it. And I want these light to contrast against my dark stuff. So we'll make some light green up. And then I'm going to skim it. And uh, can you see that? I like that already. And now we can see all the texture that we put on there. And that's the one we put the plastic wrap on and punched down with newspaper and knives and all right, so I'm going to put some brown, too. It's a, like a sienna. And we'll just mix that in, because that'll be like some earth. Maybe some more green. And I'll even leave the brown in with the green because it makes another whole different green. This one's a little darker, but if we put it just a touch of white and yellow, yeah, now we've got some really neat stuff. Can you see that there on the palette? Oh, I got all kinds of colors on it. Even when I paint in watercolor, I tend to have a, a mess on my palette, and I think of it as having more colors. Some people can't work with that mess. To me, it's like having a thousand colors with all those messy drops. But that's the way I like it. People are different. Yeah, I'll we'll put some pure yellow in. You don't know what that could be, but... That looks pretty good. Maybe some orange, too. I'm thinking maybe it's fall. This even looks like twigs up there. I've got a great idea for this one. But even if you're just doing an abstract, um, you can have a lot of fun with this technique. Or it can be the underlying thing for something more, like what I'm going to show you today. But it all ties in. Uh, working with modeling paste is really good for everybody from beginners to really advanced artist. 
if you want to just create something with more texture to it and you can get some really realistic effects and we'll be getting to that also. So again, I'm gonna put this one down and that should dry really fast because we're using the paint pretty dry. And now I'm gonna go back to the, the blue one here. This is the one we pressed a, a plate into and some cups and a little bit of texture off of a, a little kid's toy. And, and you can look for textures everywhere because even the top of this cap has all kinds of ridges and you could roll that in there and get a really nice pattern. Uh, so I'm gonna take this one now And then you have to change this mud water. I'm gonna squeeze my brush out. I'm using a pretty dry brush. I don't really want it, I don't want it dripping any wetness whatsoever. So I've squeezed it out pretty good. And uh on this, let's see, the opposite color of blue would be orange, so if we want some really nice contrast, we could use that, or we could go to yellow, so uh, since I'm indecisive, I think I'll try both. And I'll put a little white with them so it really makes them pop. Yellows seem to be translucent to me, most of them. So I always put a little white in my yellows. Otherwise you can see through them. Sometimes you want to be able to see through them, but if you don't, you gotta have that white. All right, so. Let's go ahead and lay some of this down. Oh, look at that. You can let the paint go kind of heavy there. And then maybe we'll like do it really lightly here. Now I'm just letting the brush almost just rest here. No pressure. I'm not putting any pressure. I'm just setting it down and pulling it, leaving it ever so light. Okay? And that's what I get. Okay? That was a little bit more of a let it hit down this is very light pressure this is some heavier pressure again right like that okay now i'm gonna change color What if we put just some nice white in there and see what we get? And what I want to do too is pick a focus of interest and it's like a tic-tac-toe was once explained to me. If you make a tic-tac-toe grid, if you put your focus of interest where those crisscrosses come, it's a good place to put your focal point. So I will pick right here. That would be a tiptoe mark. I'm gonna go hard right there, but now I'm gonna let it trail off a little bit. Nice and soft. Let's see what happens. There. All right, so now I'll do it a bit here. And since this is the lightest part, I want to really make it my focus of interest by putting something dark right next to it. So I'm going to come back to my blues and I can let a little bit of this black that's on this brush go into it. All right. 
Actually, I like it better right here. So I'm gonna take that black and then come in maybe right here. And later on, I'm going to go back over this with some blue, but I'm getting my nice dark color with the black. When you put a color in one spot, unless it's your very focal point, you want to spread it around. So it helps lead the eye around the painting. So I wouldn't want to put one splotch of black up here and then just leave it. Because that's not a good place for a focal point. Um, it would draw your eye right up there and you wouldn't tend to look at anything else if that was the only splotch of black. Alright, so we put all different little markings and it helps the eye travel around the painting. Okay, and that's the reason why I'm putting, whenever I put a new color, I'll do that too. All right, so I like the way that's looking already. I'd like to see maybe a little more orangey yellow coming in there. But I have to change my water. So I'll be right back. All right, so I'm going to put a little more dark blue in and places. Maybe I fill this circle and that'll fill in nice. By doing these imprints with the cups in it, it kind of starts making itself, you know? So you start to see all kinds of designs and Maybe I'll make this part much darker and come over with some another light color after. Alright, I can see that it might need a little more orange over there. Probably should wait for it to dry a little first. And this is a really nice design right in there with the double circles and there's patterns under there. So I think I'll come back and really um, highlight that some more with the orange too. I really love the textures on this. I, I like everything we got on it and can still be worked on more. So again, I put it down to dry. So we have this one now. And I think this one is my favorite. And um, it's almost, you could almost hang it up as is. But let's see what we can do with it now. All right, so let's come in and hit this with the, with the red and yellow. I bet you we'll get something really exciting. Again, we're gonna do no pressure. I'm going to lay it down and just pull it. See that? No pressure. Isn't that beautiful? The way we get that highlight. 
Now we can give a little pressure. Once you get used to no pressure, you can see what it's like to add a little more. See, that part had no texture, so it just made a blob, which it doesn't do when there's texture around. I really love that, though. All right, so let's get some more. I'm doing the light pressure. And so I think I'll do all the, uh, this veiny type work with the orange and red. But now when it's your painting, you can pick whatever you like. Um, the contrasting colors work well in giving a pop effect. But if you want it uh, quieter, you might want to use a same shade of the, I mean, a different shade of like the same color or maybe a blue and a purple because they're in the same color range to quiet things down. I'm one that kind of likes uh, brights and excitement. And when you let the areas blend into one another, it's much better than just letting it uh, stand alone. And I always use as big of a brush as you can get away with. It's a time saver. Of course, when we're doing details, you want to switch down, but we're not doing anything like a detail here, okay? Okay, I'm going to go a little further now on this one. And getting hard to find a place to put the color. I want to go with a purple, I think, and put that in. And of course, if you don't like what you put, you just paint over with the color that was there. Okay. I want to do some of these circles with the purple. Let's see if I can get what I want. I'm going to do the light drag. Hope for the best. And yeah, that's pretty good. Yep. Oh, yeah, look at that. I love that color combo right there. Um, see, but the thing is to move that purple around like every other color. So now over here what I'll do is maybe come in and hit that with some yellow and orange. All right, I've been working on this, and I've got about four colors, and um, I like the way it looks overall right now, and I might come in and do some details, so uh, I don't want to get too tedious on you, so I'll catch you up to that later, okay? Now, what I want to show you before I continue on with the others is another method with the modeling paste and by keeping your hands wet you can mold it by hand without a stencil okay so I'm gonna take my knife 
and dig some out. And I'm going to get rid of this right here. So now, I'm going to show you how you can wet your hands. And I'm going to create a small, skinny strip which would be really hard to do if you were just using a brush or a knife or anything. So with my hands wet now, see that? And I rinse any of the clay off in my water. So my hands are then clean and wet again. And see that? I can make a ridge like that. I can make it as long in any shape that I want. Okay? I can just keep going. I can seal it off. Which, maybe I will. I'll show you how I can seal it off because there's things you can do with that method. And see, you can put your paste down, but you can't get that nice, perfect line with the pop-up to it. Yeah, that one went all the way down nice. I know some people paint poor, and you can definitely use this in your paint pouring. You can make little sections that you can contain your pores. So you could actually do a mini pour in here and do another pour on there because I've done it. And it just gives you another option for both the paint pouring and the modeling paste techniques. All right, another thing we can do with them another molding thing. I'll show you how I can even just make a circle or something. Let me put the paste down. And we'll press it out. And we'll mold that side. wet hands. I've now sculpted a circle without any kind of stencil or anything. So you can always do that. You don't need a stencil. You can create raised designs and white raised at that. Alright, so I'm going to show you one more thing we can do. Got some tin foil here. And what I'll do is put a little modeling paste down as a sticky substance, but you could also use glue, okay? But you can use the paste itself also. And I'm going to make a, a dome circle type thing. So now it'll really stick up. And that stuff underneath should hold it like a, a glue, maybe even better. Now 
put some paste on it, and that's plenty. We need to do the fingers again, get them nice and wet and clean. And so now, I press it down over that tin foil. And I've never seen this done. I think I kind of invented it. I'm not sure. I've never seen a video on doing this. But I'm very experimental. And I like pushing the limits of products. And now we can smooth this even, make it really, really nice and smooth if that's what we want. But I like that, and look at it, it's actually right on my board, and it's not moving now, probably never will. Um, so we got some things we could work with here. Maybe I'll just throw a little more on for some fun. I won't put any here because we're gonna we're gonna do a pour in there and show you how that can build a wall to contain paint. So I'm gonna spread this down. I love the stucco when it gives you that nice veiny look. I'm gonna put some of that in. to counteract the smoothness of the other things. Done. Okay, now this one dries. But this was about doing a sculpture on it, okay? I sculpted this form with a lip. I made that circle flat. You could do any kind of designs and you can raise it up, all right? So now I'm going to go back to one of my other paintings and actually show you how I could use this in a realistic manner. This one right here. All right, I made a little picture of a chipmunk here, only in shapes, and I'm going to put that in here, the black one, and I'm gonna attempt to put a chipmunk and a forest seed because it looks like woodlands to me. So I'm gonna craft an oval. That'll be his body. I don't want him too big. And it gets a little bit bigger. Uh, maybe a little bigger. Yep. And then use that as the head. There we go. Much better. I'm using some muscle here. All right. Because it was a little too high. But I squished it down. And I'm going to take my... Modeling paste, brand new jar. All right, so now I'm gonna take some of the paste to glue them down. Put them over here. And if I get any out of place, I just paint over it. Yeah, excellent. That'll be perfect. All right, and this is the head. Yeah, that looks right. I 
Alrighty, so now I just fill in a little bit of paste there and maybe move it like this a bit. I'm glad I made this little sketch because it really helps me place in the tin foil. And see, before the paste sets up, it's really easy to wipe away with water, just like acrylic paint. But of course, once it sets, it's pretty permanent. So now we've frosted up. Okay, again, we're frosting. Like the stencils, but we don't have a stencil. We're frosting that tin foil. Let's see how that is. So, wet my hands. Press it down. I'm smoothing it because I want to put my own texture on it. I don't want it, him to look like tree bark. And I don't want him to be smooth. So I will be putting a texture on him. And that's why I want it all smoothed down. And now I can just wipe the excess away as best I can because I can always paint all of that. All it will take is a little black, a little bit of colors here and there. Yeah. Okay, that's the first part of my chipmunk. And so now I'll make a foot coming out. And I don't really think I need tin foil for that. Yeah, I just let it stretch out. Same thing with his tail. The tail over here. Let it stretch. There. You might need just a bit more on the tail. And he needs ears. You know, probably it might be better to wait, but I'm always, I always jump the gun, but that'll do anyways, I can go over it, and his arm, So now I'm going to press his hand out, my wet finger, so I can kind of make an indent too where the food will go. Just like that, yeah. Wet and make foot. And 
Now I want to take a brush, or maybe even the end of a brush, and his the tail. Can you see that tail? So we didn't really have to smooth that too much. We're putting in a heavy texture of our own. But now on his fur, <clears throat> what I think I'm going to do is get a stiff brush and just brush into him. And I'm thinking it'll give him a nice soft fur texture. Okay. All right, so now if I brush him lightly, and I don't think I have to wet the brush. I hope not. Maybe I should. Okay, it's got nice stiff bristles. And I'm going to brush it lightly and put some nice fur on them. See that? Short little stroke. And it's working. See that? When the brush isn't doing what you want anymore, it's time to wipe it off, no matter what you're using. Probably right in here is where we'll have an eye. I'll leave that a little smoother. Level him out. All right. Now another thing I'm going to do is put some grasses in. Maybe there's a few coming up. And I'm going to use that squeeze technique. Because that could be grass. Blade sticking way up. <clears throat> Maybe there's one even right near him. It'll help him show how small he is. We can put some flowers in this. That is some good grass. And maybe he's on a rock. In which I should have used some tin foil. In fact, I will because I don't want to use up all my modeling paste. So that was silly. I'll turn that into a blade of grass. Maybe crisscrossing. just going to keep making these grass textures. I'm going to make this rock thing the same way I made the chipmunk. Okay, so I'm going to come back and show you that when it's already done because you've seen me do what you need to do. Of course, I won't be putting fur on my rock, but I will show you the rock when it's done, okay? So we can move on to better stuff instead of tedious stuff.